Uh, okay. I will do a quick introduction using uh, uh, the slides from uh, the latest Force 4G, just uh, to give you some quick hints on what we are going to talk in this uh, couple of hours. Uh, the main topic, obviously, is Mapstor 2, our WebJS product. I will try to explain what is Mapstore 2 and to show uh, basically uh, all the main functionality of the product from uh, a couple of different point of views. We will mm, show the developer point of view and the user point of view. Uh, we will go deeper in one or the other. Uh, that depends on you. I will ask you to tell me what kind of topics you prefer, and I will talk more about them. Okay. So, uh, first of all, uh, from what I remember, you are also developers, so also the developers part should be of some interest for you, right? Yes, right. And in this room, we have some more developers as well. Okay. So I will try to cover both uh, the uh, topics in these couple of hours. Uh, the idea is to have the first hour where I talk, and obviously you can stop me at any time if you have a question to ask. And then uh, probably the second hour dedicated to question and answers in general. So let's start quickly. Uh, first of all, what is MapStore 2? As I said, it's not a single thing, so I will try to show you all the uh, different uh, things that MapStore 2 is. Obviously, it's a software, and since it's, uh, we are in the web era, uh, there is a website where you can learn everything about MapStore 2. This is the link that you can follow. This is not a static website, it is the product itself, so from there you can see the product working with some sample data set. Okay, so what it is? The first point of view that we will try to explain is the framework point of view. So Mapstore 2 is basically a framework that you can use to develop different kind of applications. When you think of Mapstore 2 as a framework, you can uh, think of use it, using it in a Lego-like way. So you have small bricks that you can compose in many different ways to get many different final products. So with the framework, you can build uh, several products. As I said, these are some, just some screenshots of uh, products that have been built using Mapstore 2. I will try to show some of them uh, uh, working uh, in a, in a uh, short amount of time. These are just screenshots that uh, are there to make you imagine how many different things you can do with Mapstore 2. Other applications that can be also very different one from the other. Other ones, and so on. So since it's a framework, obviously it's uh, also for developers because uh, if you want to use a framework, you have to have some basic knowledge of the way the framework use, uh, works and also the technologies that are behind it. Here is a quick list of all the technologies that are used inside the MapStore 2. And obviously, you have a couple of options if you want to develop an application with MapStore 2. The first one is to learn the basic knowledge about these technologies and the framework itself to uh, use it to develop your own application or ask some external uh, person or uh, company to develop the application for you. But since you are developers, probably you are interested in learning a little bit how the framework works to uh, build some uh, small application or bigger one, it depends on the amount of, of effort you want to spend learning the framework itself. But it's not only a framework, it is also a product by itself. So if you are not a developer and you don't want to learn uh, the way 
the framework works. You can also use it uh, as a standalone product. I thought that uh, the IKEA uh, idea probably is good to uh, to show how to use it. Basically, you go to a sort of store, get the Map Store 2 product, mount it a little bit, customize it a little bit, and then you have the final product without writing a single line of code. Only some uh, screws uh, and something to mount, uh, and that's it. This is the second point of view that we will show for using Map Store 2. And these are some screenshots of the default product. Obviously, since uh, it's a framework, uh, the framework has been used to build the product. So the, our product is just one of the applications you can build with Mapstore to, Map 2 used as a framework. But it's probably a, a set of most of the functionalities that are available in the framework itself. So if you need uh, something that is not uh, uh, really too much customized, that just needs the functionality that are available out of the box or the framework, the product is probably enough for you. You just need to customize it a little bit. And uh, we will see that there are several ways to customize it. And you can go. OK, uh, as I said, it's a product, but it's not uh, that you can, uh, you don't have to use it uh, exactly the way it comes out of the box. You can customize it some way. For example, you can choose a different theme, so uh, give it a, a different look. And as I said, if you are not a developer and you want to use the product, to customize it, you just need to edit some configuration, maybe some uh, basic CSS if you want to customize the look and feel. Uh, using the documentation, or we need to improve a little bit the documentation, but, but we are working on it. Uh, you can do this quite easily. And if you have uh, doubts, if you need some uh, more documentation or some hints on how to do something, we have a couple of mailing lists that you can use to ask uh, us all your questions. OK, so Mapstore 2, uh, we have talked about the two points of view, framework and product. But what I can do? with both the framework and product. Obviously, I can do maps. So Map Store 2 is basically a framework or a product to build and share maps. And what are the features that you can use in Map Store 2 to build your own maps? The first one is that uh, this is uh, something that is quite different from all the other choices that you can find on the market. Usually, any framework that you find on the web that uh, can do mapping is based on uh, one or at most two of uh, the available map basic mapping libraries. I'm talking about leaflet and open layers, and maybe also cesium that uh, is uh, an addition to those if you need to do 3D-like mapping. But uh, generally, if you choose a framework, you also choose the mapping library that you want to use. Some of them are based on leaflet, such as Mapbox, uh, stuff like that. Other ones are based on open layers. But I think only Map Store 2 at the moment uh, can use uh, uh, all the two uh, major mapping libraries that are available, so leaflet and open layers. We chose it to make it mapping agnostic, we say. So you don't have to choose a mapping library immediately. You can choose one, do whatever you want to do, change your mind at any time. And it's not a big effort to change the mapping library. So currently, we support both Leaflet and OpenLayers 3. Uh, currently, OpenLayers 3 is not uh, the real name anymore. We got back to calling it simply OpenLayers because we are at version 4. And also Cesium for map, uh, maps on the globe. And in theory, it is uh, quite simple to add support for other libraries if uh, that is needed. So since uh, you are also developers, the first example of uh, how you do coding using uh, Map Store 2 as a framework. This is a small snippet of code of uh, 
an application that you can build using the MAFTO2 framework. Since we are using uh, React GS as uh, the basic technology, everything is similar to looking at an HTML with some JavaScript code in it. So what you can see is something that resembles uh, uh, HTML. Uh, just the tags are different because each tag, you don't have the usual div or span or stuff like that. You can use them because React.js is a superset of HTML, so you can use the classic HTML tags. But in addition to those, you can also use uh, components that have their own tag names and that are usable like any other tag. They, ju they are just advanced uh, web components that add functionality to your HTML pages. In this simple case, we are just building a map with the tag map. We are specifying with the attribute map type which kind of uh, mapping library we want uh, to use. We chose leaflet, but we will see it's very simple to switch to using open layers. We also configured a couple of, a couple of layers for this map. The first one is a WMS layer coming from our internal demo server. So demo solution dot hit is the uh, WMS server we are using. And we are also specifying the layer name, weather data, some data about weather in this case. We are also specifying another layer, a simple OpenStreetMap background. And that's it. With this simple snippet of code, we can build a map and put it on our web page. And if we change our mind, we are not uh, happy of uh, Leaflet anymore because we need some advanced functionality. Just an example, Leaflet is not able to support advanced coordinate systems, uh, just the basic ones. So if you need uh, an application that can use, for example, polar projections or stuff like that, Leaflet is not able to do that currently. So you need to use open layers. But it's not a problem if you change your mind after a couple of months of uh, developing your application because switching to open layers is just a matter of doing this. Just changing the attribute map type to open layers and you will get the same application, basically just using a different mapping library. So if you need uh, advanced functionality that are only available in open layers, you can use them from now on. And you don't lose two months of work for just changing your mind on the mapping library. OK, mm, I think it's time for the first demo, just to show that this, this is not uh, something that is written on the slides, but it really works. Just let me switch to my map store. Here it is, not this one, this one. OK. This is the URL that I showed on uh, some slides ago. This is the website, the main website for Mapstore 2. This is basically a sort of uh, market or shop where you can configure your maps, uh, share with people, and build your own list of maps to be shared. From there, you can go directly to the map viewer product that I'm talking about. For example, I can open this map, and you can see the product. This is the standard product, so it's not customized, but this is already usable with many functionalities. I will do a quick tour about them in, a, in some minutes. But for now, I just wanted to show a quick example of the ability to switch the mapping libraries in amount of seconds, as I said. In addition to the maps that are configured, on the bottom of the home page, you also find some uh, examples of uh, how you can use uh, the application, the framework MapStore 2 instead of the final product. So there are some examples here. I'm going to show you one that is, uh, I, it's called the plugins. Uh, uh, example, but uh, I usually call it in a different way. This is our playground. It's basically an example where you can play with the framework 
and see how it works uh, in, uh, in, inter in an interactive way. So you have two areas in uh, the screen. The one on the right uh, is the uh, application, the real application, so the map, and other functionality that we are going to add for the moment is empty. There is only a map. But uh, if you remember the snippet of code that I showed a couple of minutes ago, this is exactly the example of map that was uh, implemented by that code. So there is a map with an open street map background, and on top of it, there is a WMS layer with weather data, the one with colors, green and red mainly. So this is exactly the example that I have shown in the slide. And then on the left side, we have the real playground, a set of buttons and controls that can be used to configure our application on the right. The first one is exactly the one that allows you to choose the mapping library that you want to use. This map is currently using Leaflet. I can choose from the combo another option. I don't know if you can see it uh, through WebEx, but the map has been basically redrawn. Uh, please note that the application has not been refreshed, so we didn't reload all the code and the web page. We just changed one attribute in a JavaScript object, and everything has been switched to using the new mapping library. It's more evident if I, for example, change to using CesiumJS. Okay, now you can see the same map is loaded in CesiumJS. I think this is more evident. And I can switch back at any time, just changing the point of view. I can switch back at any time using another mapping library. And everything is synchronized, so uh, what I can see on one map can be seen on the other, so the layers and also the current center of the map, the zoom, everything is basically the same in every uh, mapping library that I, I use. Okay, if there are no questions so far, I can go back uh, to the slides. Good. I take this as no questions. So as I said, probably I didn't say it, but I can say it now, Mapster 2 is uh, also a pluggable system. So the framework can basically be used. I showed a Lego-like uh, slide where uh, you can see the bricks. in. Uh, Mapster 2, a brick is called a plugin, which is more an IT word than a brick. Uh, plugins are basically simple pieces of uh, code that you can add to your application. It's very simple. You just need to edit a JSON configuration file to add a new plugin to your application. And when you add a new plugin, it will immediately work. You don't need to do anything. You can do some customization of the plugin, just uh, editing uh, a configuration file, and that's it. This is the way of using the application. You choose the plugins that you want in your application. You configure them a little bit using a JSON configuration file and probably some CSS if you want to also change the look and feel a little bit. And then you have your custom product. So what does it mean that this is pluggable? That I can add new plugins. For example, one to show the mouse position when the mouse moves on the page. Or another one to choose the current scale of display. Or other tools in a right position toolbar. Many more tools you can choose. And I can show this interactively. Let me go back where it is. Here it is. Okay. 
So if we go back to the playground, the other part of uh, this section here on the left is about uh, the plugins. So this is a list of plugins that can be added to the application. I can simply click on one. I have a new, I have a new Zoom Plus button here. I can add a zoom out, etc., etc. So it's really, really simple to add the functionality from the framework to the final product. Just a matter of configuration. Obviously, the playground is just creating a simple JSON file where everything is uh, stored so that you can build your own uh, customized version, save it, and then publish your final application when you're good with it. OK, uh, let's go back. No question? Yes, yeah, uh, we have one question here. Yeah. Uh, so assume we have uh, already implemented using the uh, uh, leaflet framework. Are there any finite steps to uh, migrate from an existing implementation uh, through the uh, map store? Well, uh, this is the, uh, let's say, the tough part of uh, building uh, the map store 2 framework is uh, building the bridge between uh, uh, React.js and the framework. So if you have uh, some custom components and controls that are uh, for leaflet, uh, it depends the effort of work to migrating them to Map Store 2, it depends if you want to support those kind of functionality only on Leaflet, like the controls that you already have, or also add the ability to use them from other mapping libraries. Because if you need to support that kind of functionality, and it depends on Leaflet very much, it depends on, the, uh, on how much that code depends on Leaflet or is JavaScript independent code. The JavaScript independent code uh, is not a problem to migrate them um, to Map Store 2. If it depends on Leaflet, uh, uh, obviously, building a wrapper around it for making it work in Map Store 2 is not that complex. If you also want to make it work with the other mapping libraries, is a little more uh, work to do that. But we can help if you, if you need to do this kind of work because we did it, uh, and we do it uh, every day for many different things. So we have a knowledge. I don't know if uh, you already know anything about React.js, the way it works. Yeah, uh, we are actually using uh backbone.js in our application and we okay. have written custom plugins for uh, leaflet standalone plugins that can that can work with uh, leaflet so that was the reason why uh, the question of migration came into picture. okay uh, are plugins that you developed or you took them uh, from the internet uh, it's a mixture we have written a custom plugin and also we have chosen uh, some plugins from the uh, github some open source plugins Okay, okay, understood. Uh, just some, uh, some hints on how we usually do that. Uh, if you don't know React.js, uh, React.js basically, uh, as I said, is a framework to build web components. So you can build uh, a component and call it map, and then you have some code that implements that and builds HTML, has some JavaScript code in it, uh, and stuff like that. There are also some uh, methods in a component. I can show you probably one of them uh, so it's more clear. Let me see. Can you see my editor? We can see that. OK, so this is the source code of uh, Map Store 2. I'm going to the component for the map. So there are different components, this one, for example. OK, this is the code for implementing the leaflet map. Okay. And basically, you can see there are some methods, some fun functions, some JavaScript functions that you have to implement that are called lifecycle functions. 
they are called life cycle because are, they are called automatically by the system uh, at certain moments in time of the life of the component. For example, this component will mount is a function that is called uh, uh, immediately before the component is rendered, so it's drawn in the page. So if you need some initialization code that you need to call before everything is rendered, you can put your code here. So uh, this is to say that if you want to wrap your leaflet controls and use them inside MapStore 2, you will probably need to build a component that is similar to this. So I have some lifecycle uh, methods. One, for example, that is called before uh, the rendering, that where you can build your uh, leaflet control. You do new L dot uh, name of the controls with the options and stuff like that. Then you have to implement other functions to destroy the component at the end, something like that. So it's not uh, uh, the easiest thing to do, but it's not also the most complex one. You need some uh, knowledge in how React.js work and also know how your plugin work. And if you know both things, you can build them. It's not that difficult. If you need help to convert some of them, we can do together. So we can try to convert one together and then explain how to do that. And you can decide if you want us to work on the conversion or you can do it yourself when you have the, the knowledge. Okay, and another question is uh, around the framework. So just yeah. now you mentioned how we can configure it using React. Uh, is there any possibility of uh, some similar configuration if we do not want to use React? Maybe we want to use Backbone or Angular or or any other JS framework. Okay, uh, that's possible because uh, React JS uh, is uh, basically uh, a technology that um, does not cover everything, so it's just a matter of uh, uh, UI. Uh, as you have seen, uh, we are building component that you can use in something that is similar to HTML. Uh, for example, in AngularJS, you have something similar. They are called directives, right. where you can build your components. And there are also libraries uh, that uh, allow to bridge uh, uh, AngularJS directives to using ReactJS components. So it's uh, surely possible. And uh, in this case, you will probably don't want to uh, use all the MapStore 2 framework functionality. But if you need to integrate in an application that is using different technologies, you will probably need to integrate parts of it, for example, the map uh, and some basic controls. And you can, you can obviously do it, uh, because MapStore 2 has many advanced functionality, but can also be used as simple components uh, integrated in application do, done in different ways. Okay. And also from uh, the backend point of view, uh, you are not uh, bound to any backend, uh, so you can uh, use uh, any kind of web service uh, that you want. Uh, what I wanted to say in addition to that, I had another thing in mind, but it got lost. Okay, uh, let's move. Uh, other question about this kind of topic? Uh, not as of now. If you can continue. Okay, that's good. Ah, yes, sorry. I, I remember what I wanted to, to say. Uh, there is another way of using MapStore 2 if you don't want to build a React.js application. We are also have a JavaScript, a simple JavaScript API. So the way you use, for example, Google Maps, where you include an external JavaScript, and then you have a basic JavaScript object with function that you can call to include a, a MapStore 2 application into your page without having to bother about React.js and stuff like that. So you just include our JavaScript API uh, both the JavaScript and uh, CSS for styling. And then you can build your own application around that. It's uh, very simple. I can show you how this is done. Another example that you find here is the API example. <coughs> 
in this case, the map that you see on the left is a complete uh, uh, MapStore 2 application that is used from uh, a completely, completely external web page. So it's not a MapStore 2 application itself, it's a simple web page that includes the JavaScript, the API JavaScript from MapStore 2. And just with this snippet of code, as you can see here, probably I will zoom it a little bit. So you can, when you include our JavaScript API, you will have a MapStore 2 global object. You can say create the application inside this container. And you can also choose which plugins you want to include and configure them in line. And you will have your MapStore 2 application included into your, your web page. I think you, make more. Probably this is the simplest way to use MapStore 2 if you don't want to do, develop inside it. So using React.js and stuff like that. Okay. And obviously, you can also interact with the map. It's not that you include it in the page and you don't have a way from your application to do things. Here, for example, we have a uh, button that sends an event to the MapStore 2 application, for example, to, to zoom to a different bounding box, or also to turn layers on and off. So you can basically communicate with the API back and forth. You can send events, they are called, to the MapStore 2 application to make it do something. And you can also listen for events from the MapStore 2 application to do, to see what is happening and react to events that MapStore 2 is uh, running. OK, we are good with this? Yeah, OK, good. let's go back to the demo. I'm sorry, let me. We were talking about customization. So customization is about, for example, changing the look and feel. Here you can see that we have buttons that are different from the standard ones. This can be done using CSS. But in the listed version, we have built a complete theme system where you can use less. I don't know if you know the language less. It's uh, similar to SAS. Uh, they are high-level languages to configure mm -hmm. CSS. Yeah. OK. So using less, you can basically build uh, your own team or customize the base one if you just need to change small things. And you can also build uh, very different applications. These ones, I don't know if you believe it or not, is done using the same framework, the same components of the ones that we have seen previously. I will show it uh, running in some minutes. And other ones. Let me just go back to the example. As I said, also the themes uh, can be chosen. So if I switch to another theme, you can see everything changes in the page, all the colors and fonts uh, and stuff like that. And it's very simple to build your own team because usually what you want to do is just to do change some colors, add some logos, uh, and stuff like that. And you can build your own less on top of the existing one. You don't need to build a complete new CSS from scratch. You just add your overrides, let's say, to the standard values. And then the new uh, theme is compiled and used for your application. OK. Let's, I can show you this in in practice, let me see if it works. In the playground, you also have uh, some ways to interact with the system very, very deeply. For example, you can edit 
the team in real time. This is a less file. It's very simple. You define some variables with the colors and stuff like that. And they are used in many places to, to create your final, your final team. Uh, let me see where it is. I wanted to change probably this one. It's a little bit that I don't use it. Maybe it's this one. Let me try. No. Uh, yes. Okay, I'm sorry I did it wrongly. I changed too many things. Let's go back. But as you may have understood, it's very easy to build your own less, changing just some of these variables and change all the color of the buttons, for example, and stuff like that. Okay. And also to show you an example of how you can build your plugin, if you need to add to the system just a very basic function, let's say this is code, is not that long. I'm not going to explain it uh, in detail because uh, since you are not familiar with React.js, it should take too much time. But just this part probably is enough. It's basically the definition of our component, a small piece uh, of dynamic HTML. What uh, this plugin does is this. I'm adding a button in the page with the plus in it. Whenever I click on it, a counter is incremented and a new label is shown in the page. You should say, oh, it's uh, so trivial. Maybe we want a deeper example. But this is, how, this is to show you that uh, integrating your own code in uh, Mapstore 2 is very, very simple. In two lines of code, basically, I added a button that is interactive and stuff like that. So you can use basic JavaScript and basic HTML and basic CSS just wrapped with some React.js uh, uh, bells and whistles, but at the end are basic uh, uh, web technologies. And so it's not that complex. If you want to add your own plugin with your own functionality directly to the framework and build your own plugin at the end. Uh, can we have access from our own plugin to data, uh, some geospatial data that we have on our map? Yes. Uh, let me show you this. I go back to another instance of the application that is running locally. OK, this is, uh, this is running on my machine currently. And where you are developing, you have uh, the ability to go in debug mode with a simple flag on the URL. I'm just reloading uh, this application in debug mode so that I can show you something. Using uh, developer tools of Chrome, can you see the developer tools? Yes. OK. Uh, there is an extension of Chrome that is called uh, the Redux DevTools. Redux is another library we use in addition to React.js uh, to manage the state of the application. It's something that is available independently of uh, React.js. For example, there is a bridge also to use it from AngularJS. It's a simple JavaScript library that is not dependent on uh, React.js. So you can use it to manage your state application independent of uh, the technology you use for the UI. Uh, the most important things of Redux is that you have uh, a place where all the state of uh, the application is stored. So it's also very simple to see everything that is the current uh, application state uh, in one place uh, and from a debugger like this one. I'm currently showing the state of my application. 
And if you are interested, for example, in the state of the map, you have an object that is called map. We manage history, so we have the present map, but we can also have the past and future maps. In the present map, we have several attributes. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So in the present map, you, for example, have the current center, the coordinates for the center. You have the zoom. And this is automatically available to every component and plugin of your application. So you can interact with the, the state to read it from this place and also change it. The way you change the state is sending events to the system. Basically, React.js together with Redux works with a particular event system where everything that happens on the web page, for example, if the user clicks on a button, uh, generates an event. And then there is a sort of dispatcher that takes the event and applies the business, uh, the business logic code for that kind of event, event and that updates the state. For example, you can see that now we are at Zoom 5. If I go back to the application and do a zoom in operation, I switch back here. I can see that now Zoom is 6. And that happened because of this. Let me see. Actions, where is it? Here you have, uh, here on the, on the left, uh, you have the list of uh, events that are, uh, that are launched by the system. So for example, I did this one, change zoom level with a new zoom of six and the state changed this way. This is a very powerful debugger that you can use with every React.js and uh, Redux-based application, basically, but in particular to, for Map Store 2, this is very useful when you have problems, bugs, uh, and stuff like that to, to understand what is happening, because it lets you uh, basically see everything that is happening, all the events that are run, how the state of the application changes, and uh, stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. Uh, any more question? Uh, one question regarding the uh, plugin. Yes. In the website, we saw a list of uh, plugins. Are these plugins uh, a super set of all the plugins that are available in the uh, three map mapping library that you showed, or are there any plugins that are specifically created by uh, Map Store which support any map library? Okay, uh, most, uh, let's say 99% of uh, the plugins are not dependent by a mapping library. So are pure uh, Map Store 2 code, uh, because uh, probably you can imagine that supporting uh, three different mapping libraries at the same time means that if you want to do, to write different code for all the libraries, it's a big amount of time to do that. So if we need to write every piece of code three times, for example, because now we support three different mapping libraries, uh, we need too much time to do that. So our basic decision is to uh, implement, uh, wherever it is possible, all the plugins uh, independent from the mapping library. I can go back to the source code. If you have a look, uh, you can have a look on GitHub uh, on the repository of Mapstore 2, if you are curious. But basically, all the code that depends from the mapping libraries are inside this folder. Components map, everything that depends from a mapping library is here. So we have an implementation for leaflet, on Peleus, and Cesium. Everything else that is out of this folder is uh, just JavaScript code, for example. Let's do something in practice. The plugins for Zoom Plus and Zoom Minus are not the controls for leaflet or controls for open layers, are just simple buttons. 
simple buttons. Uh, in our case, we use the Bootstrap library to create buttons, but obviously you can create buttons where uh, in every way you want. So uh, the Mapstore 2 code, uh, what the Mapstore 2 code does is uh, to create a UI that does not depend usually on the mapping library, for example, a button. You don't need a leaflet control to do a button for zooming. You can just uh, do a, a div with some styling. And when you click on it, there is an event, the event that I showed previously, the change zoom level, that changes the state of the application. So the uh, zoom in the map object becomes six. And then only the final bridge from uh, MapStore 2 to the mapping library, so the map.jsx component in this case, can uh, basically subscribe to the event, is a listener subscribe uh, method. So whenever something changes in the state of the application, the components can uh, be notified of it. So when the zoom changes, the map component is notified of it, and it changes uh, the mapping library zoom. And everything works uh, like that. So everything you see here in the screen, apart from the map itself and some basic controls that we are going to replace when we can. So for example, the bar scale here is uh, dependent on the mapping library. But for example, the scale combo box does not. And as I said, 99% of the components do not depend on the mapping library. This is the way we can support many mapping libraries. If we had to re-implement everything for three different mapping libraries, it uh, would be really an, an amount of work uh, that couldn't be done in a couple of years. OK, so this means uh, in, in future, if any of the mapping libraries, say leaflet or open, open layers, introduces some cool new features, that will yep. not be available uh, through the uh, map store? Not automatically. We, uh, we usually choose to implement uh, the features that we, uh, that we need for our customers. And uh, so uh, it depends on uh, how many people ask for it. <laughs> we are going to implement uh, that advanced feature. Okay. This is the reason why I said that usually we don't do uh, what you were asking. So if we have a leaflet control, we integrate it uh, in uh, MapStore 2. If we choose to do it a different way. Uh, if, it, if it is possible, we try to re-implement the user interface of that control and just call the mapping library for the real functionality. The zoom control is uh, the simplest example. So if you need to zoom, uh, you don't need a button that use leaflet or open layers code. You just need a button. And at the end, the only part of code that needs to call the mapping library is the one that updates the bounding box on the screen. So you only write that piece of code, that one, the one that updates the mapping library uh, bbox extent. And we implement just one single button that is good for open layers, uh, leaflet, or whatever mapping library we want to use in the future. Okay. Uh, do you have an example of uh, these controls uh, that you have for Leaflet uh, just to understand? Uh, we have used uh, some custom draw tools and clipping tools uh, which work on top of Leaflet as a plugin. So that was the reason why the question came around the uh, plugin. OK, OK. Uh, we probably have uh, most of that functionality uh, available. So, but if you have specific use cases, also in in the following days, uh, you can send me uh, those, and I can have a look if uh, they have an equivalent uh, already in Map Store 2, or how it is difficult to have that kind of functionality inside the framework. Okay. Good. Uh, any other question? No. Okay. Let's go back here. So we were talking about customization. Obviously, 
every web application uh, nowadays is responsive, so it can work on different kinds of devices. Uh, in particular, for for uh, Mapstore 2, this means uh, that all the plugins uh, can have different behaviors and looks uh, depending on the device, or both using uh, CSS and also conditional code. Uh, well, do you need to support mobile devices, for example, in your application? Yeah. Not in its current form. But, uh, we have dedicated mobile uh, platforms, but our interface right now does not scale to mobile applications. Okay. Uh, do you want to have a five minute break, probably? Or some more? Sorry, if I jump in. Do, uh, do you? So, uh, the smallest viewport that we support right now is a tablet. Uh, okay. Uh, I was saying if you want to have a quick break before moving on. Okay, let's do. Since uh, I think the first hour is gone, maybe it's time. Uh, five minutes more. Five, five, five. five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Let's continue. Okay, we were talking about the responsive. Uh, we already talked a little bit about the look and feel, themes, uh, uh, stuff like that. So I'm not going to talk too much about it. I think probably it's time to see what you can do with the, the Mapstore 2 products. I will do a quick tour of the currently available functionalities. So you can already see if uh, a plugin for what you need is already there or, or needs to be developed in any case. OK, let's go to the product. Uh, first, a quick mention to the fact that this is the stable website so where we deploy the latest stable version of Mapsor 2. So it's not the so it's not the latest uh, and uh, uh, newest version. It's um, in this case I think it's about one month uh, or more old. But uh, we also have websites where more uh, up updated versions are published basically every day, more times a day, because we have a continuous deployment. Uh, uh, procedure in uh, in place, we basically do a deploy of uh, every commit that uh, comes to the master branch of GitHub on a specific website that is the same prefixed with the dev dot prefix. If you go here, you get the very latest version. It's been published probably some hours ago with our latest commit. Every time we merge a new pull request, a Jenkins job on our, of our build machines runs all the test cases, all the compiling stuff, uh, builds the documentation and stuff like that, and then publish the new application on the developer website. So this is the same application, just with more functionalities. This is the reason why I will use this for showing you what you can do. OK, let's start from uh, the WebGIS map viewer. We'll go back to the home page later. Here you have uh, several 
uh, parts of the screen where you have different functionalities. I will try to show all of them quickly. Obviously, in the center, there is the map. We are uh, building a map uh, framework, so the main uh, topic is having a map on the screen that takes most of uh, uh, the space. And all the rest is uh, used to uh, work with the map itself. So, for example, we have here on the right bottom part a set of uh, buttons in what we call the toolbar. These are navigation buttons mainly. So you have the ability to do zooming, to go to the maximum extents, and stuff like that. All the classic navigation controls that you have in any mapping application. We also have a 3D mode, so you can switch automatically to using uh, the Cesium version of our application. As you can see, we also have uh, some tutorials. I'm using the Italian version. I will go to the English one so you can better read if you want. Uh, just give me a minute. Also, the ability to have different languages is uh, implemented in MapStore 2, and it's very simple to switch from a language to another one. Currently, we have uh, five languages that are directly included in the framework. You can add uh, a new one just uh, writing a text file with a property file, basically, with uh, a, um, a row for each, uh, for each message that is in the system and the related translation in your new language. So if, you, if we switch to English, everything is switched automatically to English messages. Here is our tu tutorial that is called in some situation, for example, when you switch to 3D, we, you have some instruction on how to work with the 3D mode, but we also have a tutorial on the classic 2D map, and this is configurable, so if you want to add new uh, uh, cards for your own functionality, you can add them to the tutorial, so your users will know about your custom functionality. And it's very interactive, so it will show you how to interact with the 3D map, uh, will show the use of the compass, and stuff like that. When you are good with it, you can close it. This is the 3D map. As I said, uh, most of the functionality is available in all the mapping libraries. Obviously, there are some things that are not, uh, uh, that makes no sense uh, having in some uh, environments. So, the, uh, the UI is uh, configurable. Depending on the mapping library, you can have more or less functionality. If you have a look here, we have a menu with some advanced ones. You can see there are some options. If I go back to the 2D mode, I got more. For example, currently we don't have a measure functionality that is working in 3D mode. This is what uh, I was saying previously. It depends uh, on which kind of functionality is uh, more asked by our customers and in, we, in which environments. So for example, we decided that for now, it's not worth to implement the measure functionality in 3D. So is not there. It will be probably in the future if someone asks for it or contributes it, because we also accept, so obviously, contribution for, from external uh, people. And we had some contribution for, from other companies that we have integrated in, uh, in our product. And to continue with the functionality in the toolbar, the toolbar can be expanded to show more or less buttons. You can configure which buttons you want to see always, which ones do you want to see also, all, only in expanded mode, and stuff like that. This is, everything of this is configurable in a JSON file. I never show you the JSON file, so probably it's time to have a quick look at it. This JSON file 
is basically where all the uh, general application stuff can be configured. Obviously, not the map itself, because in uh, Maps.2 you can have several maps, uh, you can switch between them, so the maps are configured as well. But all the uh, configuration that is common uh, to all the maps and all the uh, overall application can be, can be configured here. I will show you only some of these. I won't go into detail for all of them. For example, the plugins that you want to use in your application are configured here. And you can choose uh, which plugin are available, for example, in mobile mode and a different set of one in desktop mode. So one of the way you can customize your UI for mobile devices and your PC is to build a different set of plugins or plugin configuration for the two modalities. To configure a plugin, you just specify a JSON object, like this one, the name of the plugin, in ex this example, map, and some options to configure it. Let me see one simple one. OK, this is what I was talking about. For example, the Locate button, it's the one that you can use to move the map to your current location if your PC is enabled to give your coordinates to the browser. Uh, this is useful, uh, for example, uh, on mobile, where you want to go to your actual position. And this is the way you decide, for example, if the button is always visible in the toolbar or only when it is expanded, and stuff like that. So everything is configurable in this uh, JSON file. All your UI, so the plugins that you want to include, and their custom configuration. Let's go back to the application itself. Another important uh, function is the ability to query the map. So if I enable this tool, I can then click on the map and have some information on the objects that are under the mouse position. I can also be informed about the coordinates and also use a reverse geocoder to have an address. I can choose to query my map using a different format. Here in the settings panel, I already used it to change between several languages. I also have the ability to choose which format I want to use for querying the map. By default, we have a text format that is usually supported by all the WMS servers available in the world. So this is the reason why we chose text by default. But you can also ask for HTML. The same results are shown in an HTML format. Or in JSON. If you ask for JSON, we have a template for showing all the properties in the JSON file, but the, the template is uh, configurable, so you can also, in the front end I mean, you can configure different, uh, different templates, uh, also feature by feature if you want. So for every feature you can have a different template, or you can configure a generic template uh, that overrides the default one for all the JSON features. It's up to you. Let's move to the other parts of the UI. We have a footer. This is quite new. In this footer, you have uh, basically the scale functionality, like uh, the scale bar. And you also have the possibility to see the mouse coordinates in different coordinate systems. OK, let's, let me see. This button here on the top is the Locate button. 
uh, you, Chrome by default doesn't allow uh, lo locating functionalities uh, in uh, in the browser if you are if you didn't enable it uh, on purpose, so it's not enabled in this case. But for Firefox, uh, usually this is this is enabled, or on mobile, it's available. Then here on the left the bottom, we have a background selector where you can switch between the backgrounds that you have configured. Uh, this is a list uh, of common backgrounds, but you can add new ones or remove the one that you don't want to use. For example, you can use Bing background, Google, OpenStreetMap, or also your own WMS. Uh, you can configure any kind of layer to be part of the background selector list. And this is another example where we have a different behavior between the desktop and the mobile. I will show you the mobile version of the same application. Just a moment. I'm using the Chrome emulator to show the same application in, in mobile. You can see the UI is similar, but not exactly identical. For example, the toolbar here on the right doesn't contain all the buttons. And also, when you have collapsed it, there are a small set of it available. The background selector, the difference is that in, uh, when you have a limited space, we chose to use a vertical layout instead of horizontal, and also to have uh, a uh, a set of arrows to show only a limited amount of backgrounds and be able to uh, scroll on them to show more. So you can really build uh, something that is very responsive using plugin and plugin configuration and differentiating them between mobile and desktop. Uh, these modes, uh, mobile and desktop, are just names. You can build your own modes uh, and be bind them to uh, different configurations. So it's just up to you how many configurations you want for your application and how to use them. By default, you get two different modes for desktop and mobile, uh, but Mara, you can add new ones. Would it, yeah? be, possible, would it be possible to wrap uh, this then in the, mm, that you download from App Store? Sorry, I didn't get you. It would be possible to? Uh, to wrap this yes. mobile, uh, mobile app that we see now. So it's just a uh, web app, right? Or re reactive app, I think it's called. So you mean uh, in a native mobile? Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Well, uh, this is a web application at the moment. Uh, there are technologies to build uh, um, real native application like uh, React Native, for example, that is very similar to React.js that is for the web, but allows to build applications that are really native, so they work uh, on most of the uh, mobile platform, iOS, uh, Android, uh, and Microsoft, and stuff like that. As I said, React Native is similar to React.js, but it's not exactly the same. So if you want a real native application, you have to build uh, uh, another uh, different framework. Uh, you can probably use part of the code, not all. I'm not sure about the percentage of code that can be reused. For sure, all the business logic and that is not dependent on uh, the browser itself. And uh, for example, you cannot use uh, the mapping libraries because uh, Leaflet uh, and Open Layers just work on the browser. They don't work uh, on a native uh, environment. So I think uh, one of the most important parts of uh, this kind of framework, so the mapping library needs to be rewritten. We can build a wrapper around uh, a mobile solution for mapping, but it's not available at the moment. OK. OK, got it. Thank you. OK. Uh, let's go back to the desktop version. Just let me reload.
Okay, just to finish uh, the part related to the layers that you have on the map, here on the left you have the table of contents. So here you have the layers in a sort of tree. In this case we have a very simple map with just one group and one layer inside. Uh, just a notice, this uh, uh, table of contents part has been refactored, uh, reviewed uh, recently. So if you had a look at MapStore one week ago, probably now it's uh, quite different because we did a, a complete uh, UI refactor of the, this part. So there are more functionality available at the moment uh, and also the UI. The look and feel, let's say, is uh, quite different. But basically, from here, you can interact with all your, your layers. You can click on one of them and make it visible or not, uh, and do some operations like zoom. Oh, uh, let me go to a different part. Zoom on the layer or change some properties of the layer. Currently, we can change the title, also have it in different languages and move it to another group. Let's see if we want to have another group. Then we basically rename the default group to, to another. We can choose the level of opacity of the layer. And we can choose uh, some rendering properties like uh, having a single tile request for WMS or uh, doing tiling requests using the cache or not. The format uh, for the layer in the map, if you want to use a PNG, PNG8 image, or JPEG, for example, GIF, uh, all the formats that are supported by WMS for this layer can be chosen here. We can switch the style if the layer has more than one style available in GeoServer, for example, and stuff like that. We can also remove the layer. We can work on alphanumeric data. We will see in a moment. But we can also add new layers from here. So the table of contents is configurable not only from an administrator point of view, but also the final user can add its own data on the map. Here with the head layer, we basically have the ability to browse one or more catalogs that are available. In the basic product, we already configure three different catalogs with uh, two different, three different kind of protocols, all of them pointing to the same GeoServer instance, basically, but one is using CSW uh, protocol, the other one is using WMS, and another one for WMTS services. We have so support for catalogs using all these three formats currently, but new kind of protocols uh, can be added uh, doing some developer work. If you choose catalog, for example, WMS, you can search on the catalog and get a list of available data. For, you can also filter the data doing some search and then add the new layer to the map. The new layer has been added here. We can move items in the talk so that we can decide which data goes over the other. We can see the legend. And we can also do some filtering here of the talk. Imagine that you have a very long uh, table of contents. If you need to go directly to one layer, you can filter here and just show the ones that are matching the current filter. And in addition to that, as I said, we can also work with the alphanumerical data. So MapStore 2 is not only about mapping, but we can use all the OGC protocols to work with spatial data. 
also WFS is supported. If we switch to alphanumeric mode, we have uh, a grid here on the bottom of the page with data from the selected layer. We can go back and forth in the data through pagination. We can select data and see them highlighted on here on the map. We can zoom to a particular record. We can also filter data doing some matching on a particular attribute. We can in this do case, this data lives in DBF file, right? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, these are just server layers, so it can be a shape file, it can be in PostGIS, it can be in Oracle, everything that uh, can be served by your server and uh, used uh, by the WFS protocol. In this case, it's a shape file. It's a shape file with its uh, DBF, the states layer that you find in this GeoServer sample data when you install it. Mm -hmm. okay. But you okay. can add your own data, whether it's a database or a shapefile or any other format supported by GeoServer or also other servers, not only GeoServer, obviously, Map Server, any kind of WMS and WFS server is okay. And you can export your data in some different formats, for example, in Currently, we have the CSV and shape uh, file, but we can add uh, basically all the formats that are supported by WFS, uh, uh, such as DXF uh, and GeoPackage uh, and other formats uh, supported by WFS can be exported from here, just needs to be configured. And we can also do some advanced searching because with the the filtering capabilities, you can do simple filtering, for example, search all the states with Carolina in the name. But if you need to do complex searching, you can use the advanced search functionality. It's basically a query builder where you can add new conditions. You can choose an attribute. Mario, you should use the English version. Uh, sorry, I switched to the Italian. Let's go back to English. Okay, here we are. As you see, switching from a language to another doesn't reload uh, all the application. Most of the state was maintained, so it's very quick to go back to our search. Okay, maybe, oh, okay, I chose like, but I should have chosen I like, sorry about that. Okay. Obviously, this, is, this was a very simple search, but you can do a more complex one. For example, you can add a spatial filter. Can we then say searches? Sorry? Uh, can we somehow uh, say filter searches? Uh, currently, this is not possible, but it's a nice thing. Probably, we can add it in a later version, the ability to to save searches. Okay. Okay, you can, for example, do a... Oh, sorry. Go on. Uh, uh, yeah, additional question here. If we are speaking about uh, uh, attribute filter, right? And uh, yeah. if you click filter search, that means it will be... It will show only table, right? So with uh, 
mapped with corresponding results, but on the map there is still the whole uh, uh, state. Is uh, under development right now. Ah, okay. <laughs> we have a developer that is working on it. Uh, today, uh, the ability to filter the data on the map uh, accordingly to the filter you add on the table. So you are very on the, on the thing. <laughs> Probably tomorrow or, or early next week it will be available. And uh, an additional question, maybe yep. a little bit late, but uh, still here, uh, regarding uh, release management. So yes. as I understand, after every release, we have to uh, upgrade our library also, right? And uh, if it is your application, it is uh, developed like NPM package or maybe any other packages that we can reuse? Well, uh, for now, we didn't publish uh, the Mapstore 2 framework as an NPM package. This is something we are probably going to do in the future. Uh, what you can uh, use if you go for the, for the API version is to use uh, our online API or publish it uh, on uh, your own server. But uh, there is no NPM package. Uh, for now, we ask you to download uh, the source code and, and uh, let's say integrate it in your build uh, procedure. Okay. So, so QGS uh, web client, Mauro. Yes. The downstream prod. Just a moment. Well, this is an example of uh, uh, a product from another company that used uh, integrated basically in Store 2 in their own product to build a client for QJS. Basically, with this client, you can uh, publish on the web, let's say, projects that uh, you do in QJS. Then you publish uh, your map and your data, and you have a web client that automatically reads uh, the, the published data from QJS. Uh, so you have basically a web map viewer for uh, a QJS project. And you can also use uh, some QGIS, QGIS services uh, like the printing service. Uh, so this has been customized using the uh, Mapstore 2 library to add the support for uh, other services like the QGIS printing services. And it's a good example of uh, how Mapstore 2 can be used uh, with uh, different backends and also customizing the look and feel. Uh, and stuff like that. Uh, okay, thank you. So additional uh, maybe moment or question that came to my mind is uh, regarding uh, uh, filters and additional layers that, for example, we plan, so we, we so let's maybe from zero point, I, I opened Map Store in, uh, in web, right? Yes. On your website, then I added some filters in yep. or some, some layers. And uh, I want to come to that uh, state, for example, in two, three, five days later, and not to configure it one more time. So the, the maybe my uh, so the main uh, the main core idea here is uh, <laughs> uh, to have some state yep. inside the map store in uh, your cloud, to which I always come back and play. Okay, and that for, on a user-by-user -user base, I imagine. So it's something that uh, the user saves for, for himself and then can go back to that particular state and move on from that. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's interesting, as I said, probably is uh, just uh, uh, something that can be built on the other mm, question. So having the ability to save searches. Uh, well, uh, the technologies, uh, for in particular Redux, uh, you have seen the state uh, uh, debugger that I've shown previously. Uh, that's the place where everything about the current uh, user interaction is saved. So if you basically save that as a JSON, and this is possible. Currently, we, when we save a map, for example, we save part of it. Uh, not everything, but we can save more 
in, and you can save it, for example, in local storage or on an external database using services and stuff like that. And then you will have the same, uh, the same point uh, replicated when you go back. So it's something that technology make uh, very easy for you. So, okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's, if there are no more questions, I can try to finish the... Uh, I was uh, doing a spatial filter, so I chose, uh, for example, a rectangle filter. Let me redo. I can choose a rectangle and do a search here. I will get no results because we are combining Ari, Arizona, with a filter that doesn't include Arizona. So I shouldn't get no results, and that's it. So we can build a complex filter using the advanced query filter. So you have the choice. If you just need something simple, you can filter directly on the columns. If you need to build something more complex, you can use the advanced search to combine filter on attributes, and you can make them complex. So for example, you can have OR and uh, Boolean condition and also have group of operations. So you can combine filters together to build a final uh, query that is very similar to an SQL where close, including also spatial filter conditions. And it's a good suggestion to make this uh, savable, storable some way, because uh, probably someone will build uh, complex searches and doesn't want to create them every time. OK, uh, let me see if there is more that I can show you on this part. Probably not. Good, I think uh, the uh, talk management uh, is, uh, has been explained, so we can go to the last part of our viewport, the one on the top right zone. Here we have a set of tools. The first one is a geocoder. So I can write here, for example, Massa Rosa, that is the place where we are located. And I will get a list of results. This is using the OpenStreetMap geocoder, but it's uh, configurable to use uh, also other services, not uh, only one. You can configure more than one service. And for example, if you have your own database of addresses, uh, that can be used in addition to the OpenStreetMap one or in substitution of it. Obviously, we can zoom on it and have uh, the related geometry shown. You have the ability to go to your own page. We will do that later. You have the ability to log in, because some functionality is only available to log it in users. We currently uh, deliver with the Mapstore 2 a small database, internal database, let's say, that can be used to store user related stuff like uh, the available users groups and stuff like that and also to store the maps that you can save from from the application this uh, small database is called uh, geostore and it's uh, uh, in java technology this is developed by geosolution using java technology in a, in a set of rest services to interact with it it's automatically installed uh, together with the map store 2 if you want because uh, we chose to um, basically have uh, MapStore 2 concentrate on the front end, so it's mostly JavaScript code, but there is a small back end so that it is usable out, out of the box. But it's also easy to replace it with other back ends, other storage uh, mechanisms, and so on. For example, recently we made some integration with uh, Geonode that use a completely different environment. So it's Python based, has its own set of uh, services, database, uh, storages, uh, and so on. This is because the backend uh, part of Mafto 2 is so small that you can replace it uh, in a very quick way. There are only some uh, quick uh, calls at the beginning of the application to 
load the configuration data from uh, the internal storage, so the map configuration, users for authentication purposes, uh, and stuff like that, and all the rest is uh, implemented on the client side and can interact basically with any kind of services. Obviously, the OGC services like WMS, WFS, but also other services if you want to build custom applications. Um, also, you can uh, integrate your own system for authentication, so you don't need to use the internal storage for users and the internal services for, for authentication. You can use your own and you can integrate it. If you don't have one and you are good with using our own, it's available out of the box. So we can log into the system and when you are logged in, you get some functionality in addition. The most important one is the ability to save the map because each map can be saved uh, by users who are allowed to do so. There is a complete uh, permissioning system, so uh, you can create new maps and uh, decide you can view them, uh, change them, save them, and uh, stuff like that. I am an administrator now, so I can do basically anything, but it depends on what you are when you log in, if, if you can save a map created by someone else, for example. So uh, we can log in for, for sure, we can log out, we can change our password, and we can see some information about our account. There is a complete user management system. We will have a look if we have some time and if you are interested in it. The last menu is the one, let's say, with the advanced functionality. So for now, we have seen uh, functionality that is mostly uh, related to navigating the map, uh, seeing some information, doing some uh, uh, handling of the table of contents and stuff like that. We have the most advanced functionalities in this menu. For example, the ability to print, uh, having a preview, choosing the printing format, etc., uh, etc. Et you will get a PDF at the end. For example, uh, in the other product, uh, QWC, the printing service was completely different. We was using the QGIS server printing services, while this one is using the GeoServer printing based on, based on Mapfish. We have the ability to load uh, shape files. Let me see if I have one handy. I can upload a shape file immediately. I can style it a little bit, and then add it to the map. These shape files are not stored on a server. These are loaded directly on the front end and can be saved with the map. When you save the map, you can also save shape file information that you have uploaded. So it's vector data, basically, that is saved directly in the map context and not on a server. You can also query the vector data. Uh, this is not information at the moment, but if the data has uh, some information attached to it, you can query it. Let me see what else you can do. You can obviously do some measuring. I won't go too deep uh, in this. You can do distance measuring, area measuring, also bearings or angles. If you have uh, something that you want to seem in greater detail, just let me know. I can spend more words on it. The tutorial that we have mentioned before, just show some of the tools that are available and how to use them. You can customize it for your own personal application. You can share your maps, because now uh, we are, I'm going to talk a little bit about the main functionality of the standard product. So this product, uh, uh, what can do is, uh, apart from the map viewer functionality that we have seen, is the ability to create maps, configure layers to go on it, then save them and share between uh, the users that have accounts on the system. So it's about creating, building, and sharing maps. You can obviously use it the way you like, but 
all the functionalities are mainly created to do, be able to do that. One way you can share your maps is uh, through a link. So if you build your maps, you save it, you can create a link and send it to people so that we, they can see the map that you have created. You can share them directly on a social network, or you can embed them. Uh, we already mentioned about the ability to use the JavaScript API to embed uh, your own application, but in addition to uh, embedding the application, you can also embed the configuration for the application, so a particular map. Uh, this is particularly useful if you have a website where you want to publish maps, but the website is not about maps. It has to contain some maps inside it. You can build it using Maps or two and then embed the map in the place you want in the web page. You can use uh, two different ways of embedding. The first one is a more classic one, using an iframe. The second one is using the APIs. You have example of both here. You can cop copy and paste the code from here to your website and have the embedded version. As I said, you can save your map and you can also have a look at the help. Mm, one more thing that I have to say is that we have uh, built recently a documentation website. So all the documentation for Maps.2 is available from here. Uh, currently, it's mostly developer documentation. And we are going to add also user-related ones. And also for the developer documentation, it's under EV work. So it's now uh, not really complete, but we are uh, building more and more every day. So here you can find some guides on, uh, for example, how the plugins architecture work, how you can build your own plugin, how you can configure them. And you also have a reference for the framework. It's not complete, as I said, but there are sections, for example, for the plugins. Let me see where they are. Uh, maybe here. You have documentation for all the plugins the ones that are already documented, the other ones will appear one by one with the example of configuration uh, properties that you can use to configure and stuff like that. Okay, just to, to complete the tour, I will click the Home button because basically in uh, the Master 2 product, you have two main pages. The first one is this one, the map viewer. The other one is the home page. In the home page, you have the ability to see the maps that are available and manage them. Now that we are logged in, we also have the ability to create a new map. We can search for maps, filter them, and we can manage them. So for example, we can create a thumbnail, we can change descriptions, we can manage permissions. As I said, I can create a map and decide who can have a look at it, who can change it, and stuff like that. Obviously, we can remove it, or we can just display it the way we are used to. If I create a new map, I will get the usual product with an empty workspace, so the table of contents is completely empty. And we can fill it, obviously, using the catalog. That's the way we can use to create our maps. From here, we can use one of the available catalogs or create a new one. I can, for example, configure a new GeoServer URL. or any other kind of WMS service. Save it. Uh, there is something wrong in my... Mm. 
No, maybe it was also this one. Sorry about that. No. Uh, the, as I said, this is the latest and greatest. And probably there is something that is not working right now, but it will be fixed right away by our, our developers. Okay, let's go back to the home page just to show the latest functionalities. In addition to managing maps, you can also manage users from here. So you, have your, you have a complete list of available users and groups. You can create new ones and manage the uh, available ones. Obviously, it's up to you if you want to use if you need to use our internal user system or you want to integrate your one. Let me see if there is anything else I can tell you about this, but maybe it's time for me to stop talking and just leave room for, for other questions. <laughs> 